It's a surprise to be here today. A surprise that none of us were expecting. A surprise I'm sure that you weren't expecting either to receive a phone call on Saturday morning uh, that dad passed away. And to receive that phone call exactly four weeks after you received the phone call that mom was dying and passed away. It's hard to fathom. It's hard to understand. It's hard to grasp all of that. But in God's infinite wisdom and his grace, he called Jim home to be with him on Saturday, November 14th. In God's infinite wisdom and grace, he called us to gather together today to celebrate his life, to mourn his death. And as we do that, we're going to hopefully accomplish three goals today. One is to celebrate the eternal life that is your father's, because he belonged body and soul in life and in death to his faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. We're also going to remember the life of your father, and we're going to finally receive comfort and strength from God for today and the days that lie ahead. And so my hope and prayer is that today we will be able to fulfill those desires and those goals, and you will be blessed, and the Lord will be blessed in this time too. As we gather together, I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Faithful God, in your wisdom you have called your servant Jim Wassenaar out of this world. Though our hearts are sad, we willingly place him into your loving arms. On this day, may he now receive a glorious welcome into your presence and into your heavenly kingdom where there is no sorrow, no weeping, no pain, no loss of feeling in the hands or feet, no need for a wheelchair, no need to have a, a car, a van that is handicap accessible. God, we are grateful that you have now called Jim home, and we surrender him into your arms, where there is fullness of eternal joy and peace with all the saints in glory forever and ever. Amen. Family, it's good to be together today to celebrate Jim's life. And if you're watching online, we're grateful that you can join us via live stream. And we just pray that God will bless you too as you participate in this service wherever you are today. As we gather together, we're mindful of Jim's faith, the faith that he had in Jesus, the faith that allowed him to stand the light of day and endure the dark of night. And that faith brings us to Lord's Day 1 of the Heidelberg Catechism, which asks, what is your only comfort in life and in death? And the answer that I am not my own, but belong, body and soul, in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. He also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of our Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation. Because I belong to him, Christ, by his Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. As I think of Jim's life, that was a testimony of his life. He belonged body and soul in life and in death to his faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. And his desire was to hand that down to the next generation, to you kids, and that you would then hand that on to the next generation, to the grandchildren. And they would hand that down to their kids, the great-grandchildren. And they would hand that down to their kids, the great-great-grandchildren. And today we're grateful for that faith that's handed down. I'm reminded of that when I read these words in Psalm 78. Oh, my people hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from of old. What we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established a law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. Handing that faith down from generation to generation to generation to generation we celebrate that today. At this time, two of Jim's great granddaughters, Paige and JC, are going to be singing uh, a song for us, My Jesus, I Love Thee, and honoring their great-grandfather with one of his favorite songs.
design my gracious redeemer my savior art thou if ever i love thee my jesus tis now i love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on calvary's tree i love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow if ever i love thee my jesus tis now i love thee in life i will love thee in death and praise thee as long as thy lendest me breath and say when the death do lies cold on my brow if ever i love thee my jesus tis now in mansions of glory and endless delight i'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright i'll sing with a glittering crown on my brow if ever i love thee my jesus tis now Paige and JC and Kim, thank you very much. That was beautiful. I know your great grandpa would love, love that, and he, I'm sure, would be grateful that you honored him in such a way today. So thank you very, very much. It's a time like this that we often look back. We look back at the past. We look back at things and stories and memories that we have of the one that is, has passed a time to celebrate the joys and remember some of the sorrows as well. But all of that has taught us and trained us and allowed us to be the people we are today because Jim's impacted our lives. And so today, Sharon's going to come and she's going to share some memories of Jim's life. And I'm grateful that you're here to be able to do that today, Sharon. remembrances and some thoughts and some verses I'd like to share. Our dad was the best dad one could have. He was our Christian example. He loved each of us unconditionally. He had a big heart and was kind to all. He was always interested in our lives. He loved us kids grandkids and great grandkids dearly he often often told us that and showed it he was a family man he cared and helped with mentoring advice to any who asked nephews and nieces alike as well dad gave of himself quite selflessly growing up there was many things we did together and with family we would play handball at Northwestern, believe it or not, <laughs> um, tennis, and we did boating and had fun with the old Winnebago, fishing, and we both loved Yahtzee and Chickenfoot. Um, as an adult moving to California, I know how it saddened him greatly, but that didn't stop him and mom. They came out for every baby that was born with their motorhome, many winters also. 
We so cherish the times we all came out each summer to Orange City, but we saw Dad's legs getting weaker and weaker. When Morgan was married, Mom had her bad fall. Dad his heart attack soon after. We were there to take him to the ER, and so they went to Rock Valley to assisted living and then Landsmere. And then his legs would work would work not more than and then came came the numb hands. He also he was strong though for mom through all this. Then the move to Prairie Ridge and the moves of being in different facilities. That was the hardest thing ever for them both to be separate. Boy, was that hard. The, then COVID came, just as many things happened that was up against him, physically, mentally, emotionally, losing mom. He said to Steve and me, when we came for mom's funeral, I'm waiting and waiting for the Lord and trusting him for God's plan for me. And he said, he hated it that he would not, could not do anything for himself. The days were long, his body failing, but he loved visiting mom, getting calls, visits from each of us, and even FaceTime from a son in Africa. And thank you, Herb, and Kay for all the calls and the visits also. Isaiah 25, 7 and 9, 8 and 9, he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will shallow swallow up death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and reproach of his people and he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken it will be said on that day behold this is our God and we have waited for him and he might save us this is the Lord we wait for him let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation and also, I'd like to read um, Isaiah 35, 5, 6, 9, and 10. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf, deaf unstopped. And then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For the waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. No lion shall be there, no nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with a singing everlasting joy shall be on their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Dad, we will greatly miss you. Your love will always be with us. Your faith has become sight. You and mom are in heaven together. Your bodies are whole. And what a vision in our minds to see you walking, talking and hearing and using your hands and most of all, Walking with the Lord. Thank you, Sharon, for sharing those memories and those scripture passages, too. What a great testimony to, uh, of his faith, but also to know that when we meet the Lord face to face, there is no more, there are no more tears, there's no pain. There's no sorrow. There's no struggle with hands or feet. Uh, you can walk and you can celebrate. You can jump for joy. And we are grateful and thankful for that. Jim loved his family. That was evident. Uh, he loved uh, spending time with his family. He loved traveling. 
with, to, with his family, to see his family. He loved uh, also traveling to see several different countries and islands around this world, and his job allowed him uh, that luxury, and we're grateful for the things that he could do. He also loved coming to church. One of the things I remember most about Jim is his desire, his longing to be here on Sundays. He was so grateful when you provided a van that allowed him to, uh, to take his, um, his wheelchair in and they could bring him to church and he could come and he could be here. What a joy it was to see his face light up as he rode his, uh, his wheelchair up the, the ramp and into the sanctuary and what a blessing it was. And when he couldn't be here, he was faithful and watching services online and we we're grateful for the technology of live stream. And we were grateful that he could hear that. And we had a person from church come connect his computer to the television so that he could watch a bigger screen and be able to hear it better. And we were grateful for that. And I was grateful this last week, Tuesday, Prairie Ridge allowed me to come and lead a worship service at Prairie Ridge for the members of our church. And I had a great opportunity to lead that service. And then we sang some songs that I could hear your dad and your grandpa and your great-grandpa sing when peace like a river. And Jesus loves me, this I know. And what a blessing that was to be together. Jim also loved scripture. He loved God's word. And one of his favorite passages was your mom's favorite, which is Psalm 23. And I'd like to read that this morning as well. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just picture that image, dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. When mom passed away and your grandma passed away, I preached uh, four weeks ago on Psalm 27 where it says, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. After 70 years of marriage, the two of them are now united in heaven together, gazing upon the beauty of the Lord and seeking him in his temple together. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for Jim's life, for Millie's life, for an opportunity for us as family to gather together as friends, to gather together to celebrate life and the joy of Jim's life. And we pray, God, that as we do that today, that you will bless us and keep us, that you'll make your face shine upon us and be gracious to us. And we pray, God, that you'll turn your face toward us and give us your peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, amen. Another one of Jim's favorite passages and scripture passages is the one I want to spend a little time reflecting upon this morning. And that is Psalm 103. You'll find that in your order of service there, and you can follow along there. If you don't have the service, you can turn in your Bibles to Psalm 103. It's a lengthier passage, 22 verses. It's very appropriate, actually, as we head into a Thanksgiving season as well. Thanksgiving just a little over a week away, but an opportunity to remember these great words. Your mom and your dad heard these words often at uh, uh, communion when we celebrated the Lord's Supper together and we will hear them today again. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all of the oppressed. He may note his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, 
so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and his place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. With those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you as angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you as servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. <clears throat> Family and friends of Jim Wassenaar, Jim had multiple blessings in his life. You're well aware of many of them. He lived 89 years, almost 90 he was married for over 70 years. He was blessed with four children, 17 grandchildren, 32 great-grandchildren, two great-great-grandchildren, many nieces and nephews, in-laws, relatives, and friends. Jim had success in his business, which provided him and Millie a lot of opportunities to travel and take memorable trips around the world. Jim had a wonderful church family who would visit him, pray for him, encourage him. And as I look at all those blessings and many countless more that you have, I'm sure, I can see why Jim would choose Psalm 103 as his favorite passage. Because in Psalm 103, we find blessing upon blessing upon blessing that the psalmist takes time to remember and thank God for. Before he does that, though, he wants us to recognize that this, the, blessing, that the blessings that he have bring in him an attitude and a gratitude that is deeply within his heart. He says, praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. It, this joy and thankfulness and gratitude that the psalmist has and that Jim has comes deep from within. And the only way to describe that and the only way to have that deep joy within is to have a relationship with Jesus. That's the only way because we dealt with Jesus and the relationship we have with him, our future is secure. And no matter what happens in our lives, whether death or disease or struggle or hardship or losing feeling in hands or feet or being stuck and bound to a wheelchair and having somebody pick you up out of bed, there's something deeply ingrained in your body, in your mind, in your heart that gives you joy beyond that. And it is only found in Jesus. And that's what Jim knew. He knew Jesus. He knew Jesus and the work of Jesus on the cross and the work of Jesus through the resurrection, the work of Jesus that forgave his sins and washed him clean, the work of Jesus that guaranteed him eternal life, knowing that nothing could ever separate him from the love of God that was in Christ Jesus his Lord. There's that deep, unbounded joy that we have in hearts because of Jesus that allows then us to give thanks even in the midst of bereavement, even in the midst of grief, even in the midst of sadness. We have opportunity today to give thanks to God for what he's done in Jim's life, even in the last moments and times of his life. Dad didn't suffer long. Dad died peacefully in his sleep. Dad lived to be almost 90 years old, and he and mom were married over 70 years not many kids can say that their parents were married that long. Not many grandchildren can say, I've known my grandparents for a long, long time. Not many great-grandchildren have the opportunity to be in their 20s to see their great-grandfather and great-grandmother. For that, give God thanks. And even though Dad couldn't hear very well, we could still talk to him on the phone and have a conversation with him. And we could still visit with him. And, and the joy now we have is that dad is no longer in a wheelchair. 
And dad doesn't have to struggle lifting up a spoon or a fork or, or picking up that co- cup of coffee. Kind of, how do I do this when my fingers and my hands don't work anymore? There's lots to be thankful for as we look at Jim's life. And the psalmist has a lot to be thankful to, for too. In fact, he gives a list of four things that he is thankful for. And the first thing he is thankful for is the forgiveness that God has given to him. Psalm 103, verse 2 to 3. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins. And then later on, he would say in verse 4, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. He says later on, verses 8 to 13, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will He harbor His anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as removed our transgressions from us. Forgiveness. Jim understood forgiveness. Jim was not perfect. He was a wonderful father. But as all of us realize and recognize, we're not perfect. But we also understand if we have faith in Jesus that we know the forgiveness of Jesus. Jim maybe frustrated his wife once in a while. I know he did. He frustrated you maybe as kids once in a while, but he understood forgiveness and was great and we're grateful for that. And for those of us who are here today, we are not perfect. We make mistakes. We mess up. But thankfully there is forgiveness that cleanses us and cleans us and washes us and allows us to move forward. And we receive that forgiveness through Jesus who cleanses us and purifies us so that we can move forward in our lives just as if we've never sinned nor been a sinner. Granted, there are consequences to that sin and that action, but we move forward with the grace of God because of the forgiveness that he's given to us and washed us clean with. I love what one writer says, God is still forgiving as we are still sinning and repenting. So that grace and that forgiveness happens over and over and over again. The psalmist is also thankful for healing. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Just think about that in a couple of ways today. That First of all, physical healing. 2017, a few years ago, God gave Jim healing from a heart attack and a surgery. 2018, God gave Jim strength after he fell a few times, and God allowed Jim to recover from a blood clot in his lungs. 2020, just this past year, within the last couple months, God allowed Jim to recover from pneumonia for a while. Enough that he could be there with his wife when she passed away. Physical healing. Many of us have had diseases, struggles in our lives, physical ailments, and God has brought healing to us. For that we are grateful. But today what we are mindful of as well is not only the physical healing, but the eternal healing. That is Jim's because he belonged body and soul and life and in death to his faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Jim is forever made perfect today. Jim is forever made perfect without a a problem in his life. And what amazes me is the minute that Jim breathed his last 3.30 or so on Saturday morning, his heart stopped beating, his breath stopped. He was instantaneously changed and transformed from imperfect to perfect, from mortal to immortal. And so we celebrate. We may be hard-pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry in our bodies the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our bodies. So outwardly, we are wasting away, but inwardly, we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, 
but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. Paul talks about that in the book of 2 Corinthians, and we celebrate that eternal healing that happens today. The psalmist is also, also grateful and thankful for God's faithful love. The psalmist says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, who, the, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. God's faithful love shown to Jim and to you throughout your life. Meaning that God has always has his eyes upon you he's always aware of what's going on and through all of jim's travels through all the business transactions through all the changes in jim's life from being single to being married from being without children to having four children who sometimes gave him gray hair or no hair to having uh, uh, from working to retiring to moving from the condo from the home to the condo to the nursing home and then a uh, retirement place and then the nursing home God consistently and constantly was faithful to Jim and lovingly faithful to him. Thankfully, God, as we look at Jim's life, that's what we can celebrate. And that's what the psalmist thanks God for, for his lovingly faithfulness to us, that God is faithfully loving each one of us, watching over us. But we also realize this, that as the psalmist says, one more thing, that he's thankful that God is in control of all things. The Lord has established his throne, verse 19. He's established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, because the Lord is in control of all things. As we look at Jim's life, the amazing thing is God has been in control over it all. God knew that on March 2, 1931, James Lee Wassenaar would be born to Andrew and Susan Willinga Wassenaar. God knew that Jim would be raised in Orange City and attend Orange City Christian School through the 8th grade. God knew that Jim would be united in marriage to Mildred Kuyper on June 13, 1950 in Carmel, Iowa. And he knew that Jim and Millie would celebrate their anniversary on the same day that my wife and I celebrated our anniversary. God had it all in control. And God knew that Jim and Millie would make their home in Orange City. He knew that Jim would farm his father's land and then own and operate Northwest Implement for 30 years God knew Jim would be blessed with four children, 17 grandchildren, 32 great-grandchildren, and two great-great-grandchildren, and some even on the way. God knew that Jim would pass away on November 14, exactly four weeks to the day that his wife passed away. God is in control. Lots to be thankful for, because God's in control of your life, of my life, he knows every single thing about our lives. He knows when we sit and when we rise. He perceives our thoughts from afar. He discerns our going out and our lying down. He's familiar with all our ways. As the psalmist says in Psalm 139, he knows us intimately. Before a word is on our tongue, he knows it completely, O Lord. What a blessing it is to celebrate that God is truly in control and we give thanks. Four things the psalmist is thankful for, for forgiveness, for healing, for God's faithful love, and the fact that God is in control of all things. And as we look at Jim's life, that's why he chose, I believe, Psalm 103 as his favorite passage, and why I believe we can celebrate that with each other today. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Father of the whole family in heaven and on earth, stand by those who sorrow. That as they lean on you, they will see your love that lasts forever. Grant, O Lord, to Carol and Al, to Charlene, to Leon and Beth, to Sharon and Steve, teach grandchild, great-grandchild, and great-great-grandchild, to the in-laws, to the nieces and nephews, and to the friends and each one here, the spirit of faith, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with courage and patience, 
not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in joyful expectation of eternal life with Jim. We pray this all through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us all to pray with heart and mouth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of Jim's favorite songs is the song, God Be With You Till We Meet Again. If you're able, if you would please rise and the words will be on the screen. And we're going to be singing the four verses of God Be With You Till We Meet Again. Following the parting blessing, the funeral directors will come and dismiss you, and then all who desire to go to, the, to West Lawn Cemetery are welcome to join there for the committal service. Now go with God's parting blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.